smash? Welg asked hopefully, the dank hold Trogoff's large maul slowly rising into the air. Not yet, Krat whispered, annoyed, his words emphasized by a smack on the Trogoff's thick skull. Oh. Welg rumbled disappointedly before slowly lowering his maul, hoping his large companion wouldn't need another smack for the next few seconds. Krat looked down once more. From his spot on Welg's shoulder, he watched the approaching death rattle troops. The over two dozen skeleton warriors walking in perfect formation as a heavily armored graveguard marched at their head, silently patrolling the dark corridor that was once adored in Stronghold. Attacks from the undead were a common sight in this little corner of Shaish. The odd zombie or wraith finding themselves in the Moon Clan Grot's lair through their usual mindless wanderings. Wanderings that led to the numerous stabas or large mauls that usually ended their undead lives. But the recent incursions by death rattles was a different matter. Their numbers and frequency speaking of a concentrated effort to cleanse the underground tunnels of all but the dead. If Krat had to guess, some white king up above was trying to expand his or her territory, and the grots were a presence it couldn't abide. Whatever the reason, those that lived down below weren't inclined to move without a significant amount of violence. Besides, the mushrooms down here were the best around, and to lose them to an army of fleshless, emotionless, moving toothpicks was not something most grots would allow. As the death rattles marched ever closer to where Welg stood, Krat smiled. He knew the immobile Trogoff looked just like the stone he lay against. When Welg struck, he would catch them by surprise and smash them flat. Welg, Krat whispered, when you smash, make sure you hit the armored one first. Unfortunately for Krat, Welg wasn't paying attention, distracted as he was by a segment peed on his nose. His focus only returning halfway through Krat's sentence, specifically, the word smash. SMASH?! Welg screamed joyously before running for the marching undead. No! No wait! Krat screamed out uselessly, almost falling off Welg's shoulder before grasping one of the mushrooms that grew off the massive Trogoth's back. In seconds, Welg was amongst the skeletons, smashing happily and giggling as the skeletons turned to dust. Krat knew that was seconds too long. While Welg smashed, the Grave Guard had time to prepare a strike. The swirling purple energies on the creature's sword would cause some serious damage to his idiotic ally, maybe even negating Welg's natural regeneration. A desperate plan forming, Krat grabbed an assortment of mushrooms from his pouch, stuffed them into his mouth, and began to chew. As Welg turned to sideswipe two more skeletons, Krat let go of the mushroom he was holding and flew, letting his momentum carry him to the Grave Guard. The Moon Clan Grot landed chest to chest with the armored skeleton and wrapped himself around it. For a brief, intimate moment, Grot head and human skull were inches apart, causing a moment of awkward silence that was accentuated by the occasional smash of a large Trogoth maul. A moment that was ruined when Krat opened his mouth and spewed a torrent of green and purple vomit on the Graveguard's face. The caustic substance entering the Graveguard's skull and sliding down the inside of its armor. In seconds, the skeleton was melting, its armor becoming a cauldron of disgusting stew that melted it down to nothing. Without the Graveguard to coordinate their attacks, the skeletons were easy pickings for Welg's massive maul, the Trogoff smashing them to dust in less than a minute. His fun done, Welg looked down at his grot friend. We smash good? Welg asked happily, expecting praise for a job well done. Shaking his head, Krat sighed before saying, Yeah, yeah, we smash good. Now let's go. We have more places to be. Smiling stupidly, Welg grabbed Krat and placed him on his shoulder before moving towards the deeper parts of the tunnels. Welg was thankful for his tiny friend Krat, the little grot who always seemed to know the best places to smash. Like their Uruk cousins, Grots have existed in the mortal realms since the beginning, fighting other races over resources, territory, or because they thought they could get something shiny. Malicious and violent little monsters who saw a stab to the back as the height of strategy, and a fair fight as the worst thing imaginable. 
This state of constant war and trickery continued until the Age of Chaos, when the Dark Gods and their minions were dominant and threatened to wipe out the very realms. Unlike the Uroks who loved to fight, the various cultures of Grotz were more interested in self-preservation, choosing to hide away from the rampaging horrors of Chaos in their own distinct ways. For the Moon Clan Grotz, already inclined to hide from the annoying thing other races called the Sun, they hid deep within the Earth digging deep to avoid what was happening up above, sometimes even accidentally digging into Fire Slayer strongholds or Skaven dens, and fighting to wipe out their original occupants to expand their territories. On other occasions, their digging led to encountering spider fang grot nests or trogoth trog holes. At first, there was conflicts, as grots, like their bigger green-skinned cousins, are usually inclined towards violence. Unlike the Uroks, however, over time, these groups made a realization. If they worked together, they could stab other people much easier. Soon, a partnership formed. The Moon Clan would craft potions or raise fungi prized by the Spider Clan, and the various secretions of the spiders the Spider Fang Road would be used by the Moon Clan for various unsavory purposes. As for the Trogoths, they generally preferred to be left alone, but could be convinced or tricked into aiding the Grotz on certain occasions. These hordes of Grotz and their Trogoth allies soon formed into the Gloomspite Gits. The Gloomspite Gits tend to live in the most inhospitable places in the mortal realms, places where most mortals would never deign to visit without good reason. Moon Clan Grot homes are known as Lurk Lairs, deep and dark tunnels and caverns coated with algal slime and mineral ooze that slick the walls. Large portions covered with bioluminescent fungi and rife with hundreds of species of insects. Spider fang grot nests are in the shadowed depths of the wildest woodlands or within ancient ruins, layered thickly with threads of silk that becomes as tough as fortress walls and home to species of spiders that would only occasionally eat an unfortunate grot. Trogoths live in conditions that even grots find unlivable, called trog holes. These locations usually depend on the type of Trogoth that calls it home. For example, rock gut Trogoths live in the roots of or high atop large barren mountains, while fell water Trogoths lounge in the silth and filth of coagulated waterways and splash happily in the sewer pits deep within the largest and most populous cities. Living in such inhospitable places and generally inclined to be left alone, why would these grots ever consider leaving? To understand that, you have to understand the followers of Gorka Morka. All forces of destruction, the Grots, Uroks, and Ugors, worship Gorka Morka in some shape or form, and the Gloomspite Gits are no exception. For the Gloomspite Gits, they worship Gorka Morka as the Bad Moon, a celestial object that floats over the mortal realms and brings destruction where it shows its face. In recent times, with the release of new magics during the Soul Wars, the Bad Moon has gained significant influence, moving quickly and randomly across the mortal realms and empowering any Gross that can feel its pull, a form of madness known as the Gloom Spite. The Gloom Spite isn't the same as the Wa of the Uroks. While the Wa enhances the Uroks' urge for mindless violence, the Gloom Spite urges violence through cunning traps, overwhelming numbers, and of course, plenty of backstabs. Essentially enhancing the natural cunning, and maliciousness of the race to a maddening degree. When the gloom spite takes full hold, hordes of Grots and Trogoths stream towards the nearest mortal settlements, bringing destruction wherever they land. To be a gloom spite git is to be a mean-spirited mushroom-addled Grot, to feel the call of the gloom spite and use it to backstab anything in your way. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on the Gloom Spite Gits, those little malicious monsters. If you like it, please like, subscribe, comment, press that little bell so you know when I'm posting. But if you really like it, please consider giving to my Patreon. The extra money gives me the time I need to work on the stories that I love. And they also, I also have a Ko-fi account if you want to give a one-time donation. Anyway, thanks for listening and see you next time.